So in this video, I'm going to expand on the underscore.js templates that I worked on in the last video. So let me show you what I have set up here. I have this HTML table um, that has one row in it. It's going to be a table with make, model, and trims of certain cars. So right now I have a Dodge Charger SRT, that's one row. And the plan is to make this table dynamic by allowing the user to put in values in each of these inputs clicking add row and then the the new car will be added to the table so let me show you what I have here um, here's the HTML for the table and you can see the first row is already there with the Dodge Charger SRT and then I have the input boxes down here and this button with an ID of click me. And then here I have a empty event handler for click me. So the first thing I want to do is I actually want to create the template. So in the last video I just added the template directly to the the template function of underscore but this time I'm going to embed the template into the HTML page. So I'm going to add it down here. So what I want my template to be is just another row. And the row is going to have three variables in it, one for make, one for model, and one for trim. So to embed the template into the page, you can't just use normal HTML because it will get rendered by the page. Uh, you can use a hidden HTML element, and that could work. But instead, I'm going to show you a trick to have a template in the page where it's never rendered. So I'm going to have a script. I'm going to give it type text HTML and I'll give it an ID of template. And then I'll put the closing script tag there. So in between this template I simply have to add any HTML I want and then when I go to create the template here I'll extract that HTML. So I want my template to look like this. So I'm going to add a table row and then a table cell. And inside of the cell, I'm going to have, whoops, I'm going to have a variable called model. It's fine if it's the same as the table header. And I'll close the variable in the template and I'll close the cell tag. And I'll do the same for the other two cells. So one for, well that should have been model. This first one is make. Trim. Okay, so now I have the template embedded into the page. It's in this script tag with the ID of template. So let me refresh the page. And you can see you don't see the template anywhere. But if I look at the page, it's there. It just doesn't do anything. Okay, so here, first I'm going to create the template variable. So I'll call it my template like I did in the last video. And then you're going to use underscore dot template. And now here's the part where you actually extract that HTML using the selector for the script tag with the template in it. I'm going to take the HTML out of that, out of those tags. So this is going to return everything in between those two script tags and pass it to the template function. So basically it's going to take all of this and pass it to the template function and it's going to get rid of the script part because it's only looking inside. So now that I have the template, I want to 
grab the input values every time the button is clicked. So I have this make model trim and I have IDs of make model trim on there. So I'm going to create an object called user values and I'm going to just get the vowels from each one of those input boxes. Model And since these properties are exactly the same as the variables inside the template, I can simply pass this user values object to the template and compile it and in return get the, the new table row with each one of these replaced with the actual values. So once I have the values, I simply need to append it to the table. So append here is the name of the T body element inside the table. And I'm just going to append to it so it adds it after this first row here. And it's going to add it after the last row in the table. Just depends on how many rows are already in the table. So append here. Append. And then I want to do my template. And since my template is a function, it takes in an object with the properties matching the variables in the template. And the last thing I want to do, I just want to clear out the, the input boxes so it'd be easier to add more than one row. Okay, so that should be enough for us to see new rows getting added. Let to me the table. refresh. So, so I'm going to add a row, Tesla, model S, P90D, and we have a problem. And I can see I didn't uh, use the correct syntax. There should be a percent sign there instead of an equals. So let me remove that or change that. and refresh. So let's try the Tesla again. Okay, cool. So it took the values out of the inputs and it added it to the table. Let's try something else. Um, let's do It's hard to think of a car. So Mercedes Benz S Class AMG. Actually, let's do that. That's probably right. So there's another one. And I'll do one more. Ford Explorer SE. I don't know if that actually exists, but I'll add it anyway. So there you can see how easy it was to take this template here and use it to dynamically add more rows to a table. So I hope that helps you understand underscore.js templates a little more. Thanks for watching.